as well. Yeah, we're recording week thirty, so you're good. Okay, so I'll call the meeting to order. My, my first action is a committee chair. <laughs> and uh, I'd ask Derek to do a roll call. Carol? Here. Vicki? Hendricks? Gill? Here. Woodhouse? Here. Fleming? Here. Brookins? Here. You have five of your seven present, so you have four. Thanks. And was there uh, verification of the meeting? Yes, Mr. Chair, the meeting was properly noticed. Okay. So, uh, like a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion or a second? Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of approving the, the agenda say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we've got our agenda. And also need a motion to approve the minutes. From an April meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting on uh, April 1st. Okay. Motion. Nobody else is here. All, <laughs> <second. laughs> All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Like you said, there were only two of us there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, public comments. Do we have any public comments either here or online? It's not. Uh, okay, so now we'll go to reports uh, first with our zoning administrator. So, Matt. Uh, Matt Albright, zoning administrator. Um, just give a brief overview of the zoning department. Um, basically, the, our mission as a zoning department is to protect property rights and ensure water quality um, through compliance of private on site wastewater treatment systems. Um, we currently have uh, one full time administrator. She will be starting. At the end of this month, um, one shared administrative uh, person, personnel, and one department director, that would be Kathy, um, and then one interim staff, interim staff, that would be me. Um, the zoning department administers nine ordinances. Those ordinances are the, the zoning or our comprehensive zoning ordinance. Sanitation ordinance, which is your private on site wastewater treatment systems, uh, non metallic mining, uh, which we'll touch on today actually, uh, land division ordinance, which is um, surveys, you know, kind of gives a good guideline for that, and subdivisions, uh, county addressing systems, uh, the tri county airport, shoreland wetland, which is uh, the shoreland protection zone around here is based on streams. I don't have a lot of lakes in this topography, but uh, it's a 300 foot buffer off of streams. The floodplain, uh, pretty self explanatory, and then uh, mobile, mobile uh, towers. Um, you know, last year we did uh, 40 uh, addresses we issued. Uh, we had 10 Board of Adjustments cases, um, which Board of Adjustments is variances. Um, kind of deviating from the rules that are set forth on, in these ordinances a little bit. Uh, on 172 land use permits, uh, 30 rezones, and 76 sanitary permits for new, new and replacement septic systems. Um, a few things we have in the works. We, are, we recently completed a short-term rental ordinance that is with our corporation council. I know Julie and Steve were involved in that. So that's something that'll be coming down the pipeline and you guys will be involved in. Um, and our new zoning administrator, Katrina uh, Salewski, will be starting at the end of May. Uh, so far this year, we have 17 sanitary permits we've issued. Uh, 16 soil tests, and that's the precursor to a sanitary permit. You have to see what what uh, the soils are going to tell you, what kind of system that uh, 
that that area can handle. Um, 46 land use permits, which is like your, in essence, your building permits. Um, but they're, they cover any of the ordinances from shoreland, wetland, uh, floodplain, and our uh, um, comprehensive zoning ordinance. And we've issued 21 new address points. Um, that's all I got for a brief overview of 3,000. 30,000 foot overview, I guess. Um, Any questions? I was just going to add a little bit of background for the new board members. Okay. Just to put it in context a little bit. Um, the land and zoning I mean, uh, department, uh, you know, but even before we combined with extension to call this after resources, we were going through some, some turnover and some reshuffling. And so, uh, we're, we're actually borrowing Matt from Vernon County part time until we get things set up. And our, our new zoning administrator, she graduated like she will be graduating, graduating really soon, really soon in the, ne so, the next week or so. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't know if you've talked about how much overlap there might be, but uh, whenever she gets her uh, her POUTS license, which POUTS is uh, private on site wastewater treatment system. Whenever she gets her POUTS licenses, then, then she'll be off on her own. But um, until that point, um, we want to make sure she she's well trained and knows knows how to inspect them, knows knows what she's looking for with those plans. Right. Um, Jen, our uh, administrative assistant, she's um, pretty well versed on the the zoning stuff already, the land use stuff. She's she's got a really good handle on that. So yeah. so we're still. In a certain phase of transition, so we'll be back into normal in a few months. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, were there any more questions for Matt? Okay. So, uh, Kathy. Hi, I'm Kathy Cooper. I'm currently the County Conservationist in Richmond County. I work for the county as a county employee for this is my 35th year. Um, I've been a county conservationist for almost 30 years. Um, and like they said, it's an office in flux. Um, we've had one person let go and we've had three retirements since August. Um, I'm the old, old person in the office. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I mean, my, my, we have, um, the land conservation has a technician, two technicians. One deals with, um, he, Derek. Warner, he's been here since September 22, and he does like all our design work for conservation practices, dams, waterways, diversions, stream bank protection. Um, and then we've got Corey Rogers. She started in January. Um, she interned at the State Department of Ag. And the nice thing about that is she knows a little bit about um, this one program we help with. It's Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program. So she'll be helping doing some of the inspections with that. She knows what she's doing. And she's picked up on our farmland preservation program. Um, so she's kind of putting that together. And this and Jen Trapp, she started in January too, and she's the office system tech that uh, Matt was talking about. And she right now she's mostly mainly because we don't have anybody for zoning. We're mainly focusing her on the zoning things and then event she's starting to pick up land conservation things too. Um, so, and uh, then Katrina and I, we are both working on getting our certified soil tester licenses and our pouts inspector licenses. Um, she and I both attended a two day workshop up at um, Tree Haven up at, by Tomahawk on the soils. Um, and we both got our tests scheduled for August 6th. And we'll see who gets it, if one, both of us get them or not, that'll help. We still probably rely on Matt a little bit to make sure we know what we're doing. And then she's got her pulse inspector license testing scheduled. Um, I'm waiting for word from the state because about 12 years ago, they were talking about combining the offices and I went to get, try to get these licenses and I got my pulse, but I never, I just let it go because I figured I was done with it. And now I'm back to doing it. Um, in the packet, I did include like our ac the acronyms you may hear a lot of just so you. If something comes up and we accidentally say the you know say it's been in, please remind me that we're talking in lingo that you don't understand and 
and um, I will uh, explain him a little bit. And then I also include in the packet the agencies and the programs we work with. Um, just to give you an overview, I'm not going to go through it right now, but if you have any questions, feel free to stop in or call and we'll try to explain things through you. Um, probably in November, December, January, something like that, we'll be bringing to you some of the wildlife damage things you need to approve. Um, and we'll explain that more when we get closer to it. I don't want to explain it to you now and then um, you uh, won't remember you know, six, eight months from now. So uh, we just finished up our tree sale. Uh, we have a nursery stock sale. Um, we sold 2,100 trees. And this is the first year we did it online and it went really well. So um, we'll be planning to do it again this starting this fall. So any questions for me? Any questions? Tree sales, what were they like last year and previous years? How does that, how does this year? Um, a, a little more, a few more trees than we did like last year, um, last couple of years. But um, we'll, every year we evaluate, we'll evaluate. We now are doing pre-ordering before we did it as they went. And so we're gonna have to pre-order. So we're gonna have to kind of look what we sold this year. And then if somebody, there's some trees that I have packages put on our Facebook page. If there's trees you'd like or interested in getting, let me know so we can think about ordering them for next season. But yeah, it, it we didn't have to deal with collecting the sales tax, collect, you know, it, or dealing with. We just I just got noticed that we got orders and it was easy to keep track of that way. So, how do you uh, communicate to the public that there's a tree sale? Because I I never heard about it. Um. This year we just we did it on the, the website and the um, Facebook page. Um, it was just we're we're trying to figure out. I you know we can let people and I guess the, the paper, you know that's it's hard now to know how how to communicate with the public besides those. So next year maybe WRCO. That yeah. Might be good. Yeah. So we're, we'll try to get things more out there, but it's just. For the first year that you, that you had, or mm -hmm. okay, we had a few extra. We had a few extra left, and put it out there, and put it out to the stat. Uh, the department heads here too, and got rid of all the trees that we had. So possibly working with other organizations might be good too, like FFA or 4-H or other things. Just another way to get the word out, so those those communities know about it as well. Just a thought. We've had a lot of we, we, this year. We sent letters to the people that had bought before, and let them know that we were selling it online too, instead of doing it in person. How do you determine how many trees that you're going to get? Is it a, a basically what we did was I took what we had the last number of years we've sold trees and figured out an average, and then kind of made my best guess. Okay. Exactly. It was it was a, it was a first, we've always before we've always said we've got these trees and and then it was our, our secretary at the time would say you call in and you want you stop in you're ordering this many trees so she would call and say hey I need twenty five red oak twenty five of this and so this year it was like okay we're just pre we have to, we had to pre order to be able to do it so. When does the, t the tree sales typically start and then end? how long is it? Usually we start in November, sometime in November. This year was a little slower getting started with everything, all the changes. And then it goes through until like the end of March or until they're sold out. So, and the reason why we started doing these tree sales is because DNR at the, at the time we started could only sell, had to sell at least 500 trees. Like if you wanted to buy trees, you had to buy at least 500 trees. And then if you, if you went to yourself to buy nursery trees, you know, so we took the, you could buy a few trees, but to buy more than like say 25 trees, it was gonna cost you a lot of money. So we did this to bridge the gap between the 25 trees and the 500 trees. So we sell them bundles of 25 and- And how big are they? They're usually, usually two-year-old trees. 
So some of the two year old trees in the spaces that way and our oak trees were like this tall. So these are bare root dormant. Yeah. Okay, sure. Questions? Okay, so um, this will be the first time for Adam to talk with us since the reorganization. So, Adam, you want to give some background on the extension? Yep, so welcome. My name is Adam Beatty. I'm the area extension director for this area, so area 13. Um, extension is a little bit different than most county departments. Um, it's a, a true partnership between the county and the state. So. Uh, most of the employees are the University of Wisconsin employees. And I think Derek, you might have to stop sharing. I've got a couple things that I'd like to share with you guys, and hopefully this yeah. works. So the first thing I have to share with you guys, this comes up. This is a quick video. Um, from our dean and director, so hopefully you can use this. So you may have to listen to it off my. They should go through the speaker. So I have to mute myself. Yeah, probably. And maybe we won't be watching it. Oh, or maybe it'll just go from your speakers out. Yeah. That's share. Okay. All right. Last attempt on Carl. Hopefully we can get us to work. All right, so I'm failing off right away as a good educator should with technology. Um, but basically, there's a short video that I can get to you guys. We can put it in the thing. Um, a welcome to Extension Committee and the County Board, and really about how this truly is a partnership. So, with that, I'm going to attempt one more time to share something different with you guys. And I have a PowerPoint presentation. So that's what you guys should have in this packet here. Um, just uh, so I gave you guys the slides here. I didn't quite get them in on time to be put into the packet. So I do apologize for that. But I did give you guys three handouts. First is going to be the PowerPoint that I'm going to talk about. The second one is a um, is Richland County Forge. This just came out last week, Friday. Um, so this is the trends for Richland County 4-H in the county. So 4-H is part of the extension program. Talks about youth participation, youth in 4-H and where we're at with Richland County. And then the last one that I have for you is Division of Extension County Partnership Guidance. So one of the big questions is, how does extension and the county really work together with each other? Uh, so this was put together um, back in 2021. Uh, this is put together in partnership with uh, the Wisconsin Counties Association. Uh, so they had input and so did other county stakeholders. And then it was revised here in March 2024. So this kind of talks about the relationship that Extension has uh, and kind of the roles and responsibilities of the county, the role and responsibility of, of the University of Wisconsin Madison. Um, how I as area in director interact with the county and how the employees, county staff, those types of things work together. So that's just the overview there. And hopefully I can share the video there.
I'm not letting you share your pen, Kevin. What's that? Are you happy to share sharing? There we go. This was coming up now. There you go. All right. So hopefully this goes to my next presentation. So it's not changing slides. Do you want to start presentation? I did. Oh. And that's all right. We'll just talk about it from paper. Because, you know, so a little bit about myself is I've been in uh, an extension here in Richland County since uh, November 2024. 2004. Uh, I started as an agriculture educator here and then uh, in 2019 became an area extension director. So um, one thing I've learned over the years is never to trust the technology completely and always have a backup. <laughs> Um, so that's why I printed off the, the slides for you guys. Uh, again, we're very unique. So what the purpose of this quick presentation is to provide you a little bit of background on extension, uh, give a quick introduction to who's actually on our team, uh, highlight how our partnership and how, how you help create reach across the state, and uh, what, what are some things that you guys as committee members, uh, what, what is your role with extension? Because we're not regulatory, right? So we don't... We're all education, so it's not like we have a lot of policy decisions to make on before we have to you provide oversight to us and in some different capacities. So what is the role there for, for you guys as committee members? So as we get to the next slide, it says about us. Um, really, there's a lot to know about extension. Don't overwhelm you, uh, but always be afraid to ask if you have questions of me. Uh, I'm always available. Even though having five counties, I'm usually here one day a week-ish, uh, makes sense, right? Five counties with five days in the work week, so I try to get to each one every week. Um, that doesn't always work, but uh, the next slide though that says extension's mission. So what are we really about? So extension is what embodies the Wisconsin idea. The Wisconsin idea is that the universities of Wisconsin aren't just for the students on the university, right? There's lots of knowledge created there. There's a lot of wealth of information. And how do we get that to the borders of the state? And that's extension's role. Really, our function is to provide outreach education to all members of the community um, in, in different areas. And we'll talk about what those different areas are in a bit. The cool thing is, you know, extension's mission then and now really hasn't changed. We've been around for over 100 years. Um, you know, 4 H, I don't know how familiar you guys are with 4 H, but way back in the day, 4 H was started as a corn club. Researchers were finding that they had a really great opportunity to really expand corn crop. But everybody said, I've been doing it this way forever. There's no, no reason to change. So they started these corn clubs for kids. And they got the parents to give each kid one acre plot of corn. And they, so they taught them the new methods. They tripled their corn crop on that one acre. And then that taught the parents how to uh, incorporate new technologies. And that was kind of the foundation of bringing that resource from the university out um while you know we've changed a lot of how we look our mission is still the same is bringing those resources up so that picture there is one of the original corn clubs the harvest the kid harvested that corn off the acre and now we're into looking on the other side you know we're still an egg in that actual room but we're how we're utilizing technology uh, has changed so just a little bit of how we've changed over the year but we're still doing pretty much the same we're really trying to um develop education for communities. We have a pretty broad statewide network. Um, the cool thing about extension is we're in pretty much every every county office, but we also have a huge statewide network behind us, right? So uh, as, as you guys get in, we should talk a little bit about like what, what are the services and things we share, co-fund with each other. It's more than just that individual person or that individual program, right? We have specialists that we can tap into. We have um, other ways to communicate with other organizations, communities, uh, and so on. So uh, it's really about a value added uh, resource that we bring to the, to the community. Just a little bit about Extension's work. Um, we're county based uh, Extension offices statewide in three tribal nations. Uh, 
We're divided into 22 areas led by area extension directors, overseeing 225 educators statewide. Uh, and often in cooperation with the counties, uh, we try to tailor our programs to local needs. So while we have statewide priorities, we also look at needs here in the county. We do needs assessments. Uh, and a lot of times with our agency partners. Um, a couple of years ago, I know the hospital did a community health needs assessment. And our health human development relationships educator helped develop the, the survey and take some data for the community on how that, that was put together. Programmatically, extensions broke down into two large institutes. Those are ag agriculture, natural resources, and community development. And the second is youth, family, and health. Underneath ag, uh, we have our traditional crops, dairy, livestock, farm management, those types of programs. Uh, we also have programs, the Wisconsin Geological and Natural History Survey, Wisconsin Master Naturalist Program, the Master Gardener Program, uh, and we also have uh, water resources and some statewide uh, water specialists in community development. On the youth and family side, the big one there is 4-H. Uh, we also have food wise strong body red smart teen court um, some different programs that are really geared towards multiple areas of our population um, extension is not just about the ag side of it but really about helping all families uh, within the community as we move on you can see the extensions reach there there's a lot of big numbers there that we really do hit a lot of people in the state uh, but if you want to flip to the next one, that local reach. Um, and I do apologize, this is the one where I was really hoping that we would have it up on the screen. Um, but in 2024, or 22, 23 academic year, um, we had 13,000, just over 13,000 educational contacts within Richland County, a lot of our department. And the thing about that number is that does not include our 4-H contacts because they report differently. And I can get some of these numbers to you. And again, they're educational contacts and not exactly unique contacts. Uh, so we might have seen some of the um, people more than once, um, or they might be some overlap in some different areas. And that's where I really wanted to supplement this slide with the uh, Richland County 4-H manual. So we have, within 4-H, we have uh, 18, uh, Charter 4-H clubs, 11 of them are community clubs, the traditional clubs that we would think about as a 4-H club that serve in our communities. We have seven project clubs, and now we're starting to work with school districts on some after school clubs. So we are- so 18 in Richland County. So there's 11 community clubs, yep, and then seven project clubs. So okay. like Feathered Friends and the Rabbits R Us, the Horse Project, Dairy Project, so they have different project clubs as well. So we are right now, um, the numbers that I have for today, we have 716 youth in 4-H, so you can see we're actually up quite a bit from last year. Um, we have 72 adult volunteers that are helping out uh, with those uh, 216 youth, so it's, it's pretty amazing. So how does extension come to life in Richland County? Uh, the next slide then there has a list of the county staff that, that um, the way extension works, is that we have a, um, a shared interest uh, and we uh, work through what we call our uh, partner agreement or educator contract. So um, with that and in this partner agreement, it goes more in depth to that, but basically uh, we are a full department of the county. Uh, the county provides us with some support staff, as you can see on the, the list there, that'd be Jenny Silver and Sandy Campbell. County also provides uh, office space for us, meeting space, storage space, uh, supplies, travel, those types of things. And then you buy into a percentage or uh, buy into a flat fee for the educators. We create some the line office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But so with that, the Grissom County staff that are on contract, so that we list out in our educator contract for you guys, is Carly Craddock, who's our 4-H educator. She's a full-time FTE here to the county. Uh, human development and relationships educator, that position is vacant and we are doing interviews for that position currently. Uh, we have them scheduled. Uh, so that is, uh, if any of you knew Chelsea Wanakee, that was her previous position. 
Uh, that is an 80% position. Um, starting in June, I didn't have the name until earlier, Anastasia Porth is going to be starting as our regional crops educator. Uh, so she will serve Juno, Sauk, and Richland counties. Uh, regional livestock educator is Beth McCollum. She starts on May 20th, serving Crawford, Cross, Richland, and Vernon. Uh, locally here, uh, we have a food-wise educator, Monica Diaz. Uh, she serves 80% time here. And then again, our support staff. So uh, that's just the staff that's here focused on this area or this region, uh, providing local education. And then I talked a little bit about that leverage resources, those resources that we have available to us on the backside uh, that the county doesn't actually put funding into, but has access to. And the list I put here on this slide, though, are the ones that have actually that actually are housed in Richland County or come to Richland County on a regular basis. Uh, so, for example, myself is in there. I'm not. I'm, I don't have any part of my salary or anything funded to county um, full state employee. So, um, but I I serve in the uh, basically the department head role for the office. Um, we have food wise coordinator Sheena Cook. She serves as a three. Three County Foodwise Unit, Crawford, Richland, and Vernon. So she works with Monica. Uh, she's Monica's direct supervisor, and they work with the schools. Uh, they work with farmers markets and different things like that. We have our statewide swine outreach specialist, Jeff Morris, who has an office currently on campus. And so does uh, Joy Kirkpatrick, who's our farm succession specialist. Again, so there's quite a few staff with an extension that are actually um, serving here. So a little bit about how our partnership works. I kind of talked a little bit about the uh, county funding and budget contract. Um, you know, the, we have that role. So way back in the day, if some of you may remember or ever heard about the 60-40 split, we don't do the 60-40 split anymore. It's the same that there's a fee for an FTE and then based on that FTE, it's allocated out. Uh, so for example, it's roughly $4,600 or $46,000 for a full FTE. Like those regional positions, for example, Beth is quartered, shared with four counties, so that FTE gets split in the fourth. So each county pays that in proportion. Um, but how do we get our work done? And I think this is, again, this is another one I wish we had a little bit bigger uh, slide for you guys. Uh, but we really do take local needs to heart, right? We do local needs assessment with our local educators. So in the first thing there, it says local needs and trends, local partners. We're always with somebody else. We partner with a lot of organizations. I know we partner with Kathy quite a bit. Um, we look at what statewide regional needs and trends are. And then from those trends, our educators kind of take those and say, hey, what's, what's the need for our county in those departments? And then we work it back up the line and come up with where we end up with our programming. Uh, so we really do try to make sure that the programs we're delivering are impactful uh, to the for the residents of, of Richland County. And then here's the, the next slide there is uh, educators or communities that understand local issues and needs, right? Most of the people that we hire are here. They're not sitting in Madison. They're not sitting far away. They're part of our community and they really are involved. So they want to understand the context of the needs, prioritize develop and de deliver those educational programs. We don't want to just deliver it, though. We want to make sure that they are, are being impactful. So we measure them and refine them, and we do that circle over and over again uh, to really meet uh, the citizens where they're at. And so for you guys, you know, how do we work together? Well, there's, you know, I get the fun pleasure of doing the supervisory and the overseeing of the individual staff. We work with you guys on the county board to help us with those priority needs assessments, provide feedback. Uh, generally, in our educator reports, what we've done in the past in our committee is have one educator come in every month, talk about a program or some programming that they've been doing to keep you guys aware of where that investment is coming from. Uh, so we just generally do a short presentation, then rotating through each of the educators um, every month. And you guys are really our eyes and ears and help communicate our value back to the county board. So that was happening with the education. Yep. Yep. So now it'll be. Yep. Okay. So that's my plan. If you guys have something you'd like to see different, uh, please let me know. 
And then the last one there, and I'll let you guys read those on your own because I don't want to go through a lot of time. Um, but these are extension strategic goals. Uh, really, we want to be mentors of people and catalyzing relationships. Uh, we want to support the people that we have, and we want to foster growth in our communities. Uh, and while doing all that, uh, while having a commitment to um, diversity, equity, inclusion, meeting everybody where they're at uh, within the communities. That is my quick overview, and I, again, sincerely apologize that the PowerPoint didn't work because some of that stuff would have been a lot easier to read. Uh, but do you guys have any questions for me on that quick overview? Yeah. yeah, where are you guys located? You, you were on the campus in Florida, right? No. So when I started in 2004, we were in Melville Hall. And then when the county acquired East Hall, we moved to East Hall. And then uh, when East Hall was re realigned and sold to the school district, we did a quick stint where we had most of the educators working from home and a couple of educators in HHS. And then now we're back in Melville Hall where we started or started, so um, that's where we're at currently, but I'm guessing that there's things to come in the future. Um, yeah. But I, I do, do think that that has been a good location for us. I mean, we've seen an uptick in just the people stopping in to see us and uh, our 4-H numbers are, are growing too. It's been a good for us. And we'll see where it goes in the future. Yeah, none of us know yet. That's right, nobody knows. Uh, do you have any insight on the uh, uh, little bit of an increase in 4-H enrollment, um, you know, over the previous years? Well, so we took a really big hit during people started reevaluating where they were at. Um, and I think just, again, people getting back out and having that access and uh, we've been doing a lot more work in the schools themselves. So we've been doing some more partnerships with the schools, especially some after school programs. And as we do that, we're getting the word out about 4-H and that's helping us as well. So, so is that, you think this is kind of a recovery, you know, a little bit of rebound or is it an increase of the pre -COVID? Um, We're we're a little bit higher than we were pre-COVID, okay. um, like not much, but I do think it's a lot of recovery. The other thing is though, our youth population is shrinking. And so I think, just that connection with the school though has been a real benefit to for kids to see that 4-H isn't just about showing animals it's fair anymore. There's so many more things that uh, 4-H offers that I think uh, as we reevaluate where where kids are at, that it's offering some of those opportunities. And when they do uh, like exploring, how would they call it? My my daughter, my kids both went through the 4-H program here. My daughter is now a youth leader, and uh, she finished her last year was. Um, September, and um, so she's now a youth leader. She's an actually adult leader, mm -hmm. and they're um, doing. They do a program where they it doesn't just 4-H members. They they have a thing at the. They invite kids to come in and see what 4-H is about. I think that has helped a lot. Yeah. And we've really been encouraging our 4-H events, our 4-H members, to bring a non 4-H with them and participate. Right? So how do you get people in there to see the value? Of yeah, thank you. Uh, we've all got some more reading to do and get familiar with all the stuff that, that uh, you guys do. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll move on to our more traditional monthly stuff, and that is looking at the zoning petitions. So, which got Matt? All right, first up is the Winchell Browning Territory uh, petition that was tabled from last meeting. And the reason it was tabled was to check with the highway commissioner and um, for township approval, I guess. And the, they did get township approval. It was contingent on a visual screen. And I guess I, you guys can probably introduce yourselves now too. I'm Brian Brenninger, the owner of the land that the proposed quarry is on. My son, Roth Brenninger, and Lucas Winchell, the quarry operator. Yeah, green tech. So he's the one who put together the plan here. Um, so, yeah, they were, it was contingent on a visual screen, which I believe you guys are 
in the process of or working on pine trees and a tree. Yeah, I think that was all approved at the township level. Yep. Yeah. Just went right into the reclamation plan. Yep. Yep. So so that's fine. Um you know, we got in contact with Josh Elder, the highway commissioner. Um, didn't see any issue with the with it at this time. Um, you know, there he said there may be increased traffic down the road. We got to kind of see how that goes. Um, and you know, there would be with increased traffic, there just naturally would be you know more wear and tear on the road. But you know, overall, he was he was fine with it. Um, Jeff sure with the DNR. I don't know if you've been in contact with Jeff. Um, I think I deal with him on other quarry. He didn't get a hold of me on this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cause he might require a, a stormwater permit on. Yeah. This because. Yeah. So okay. and that, that's the DNR thing. So yeah. yep. we got word from him. So that's that. yeah. So as, as long as you're taking care of that, we're, you know, we're, we're fine. I yep. just wanted to make you aware of it yeah. more than anything. Yeah, basically, once you guys approve it, then we put bonding on it mm -hmm. and stormwater permit. Yep. And then yep. Yeah. Good. Another question. Yes. Now, this, this is going to have uh, entry off of Y. Is that right? Correct. Yep. So, is there some kind of driveway permit also that needs to be done? There's an existing road there already. Oh, but I would guess. I mean, we talked to the commissioner about widening it out and everything. Um, but there is actually a driveway there already. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell from the aerial photo. Yeah, right. We did have the commissioner there at the township level for mm -hmm. some discussion on all of that. Yeah. Yeah, we just had to get his blessing in writing more than anything, you know. He did say that he would prefer a good percentage of the traffic coming out of that quarry would go left, which would be south, get you to Highway 80 quicker than to the right going towards Richland Center. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we have a large volume of traffic at l and County. Up to a point, the quarry is a little a couple miles up the road from that. So we already have a, a fair amount of existing traffic yeah. Yeah. on that road up to a point already. And the county did redo that here a couple of years ago. Did a phenomenal job of getting a good base down and creating a, a very good roadway. So, Matt, or maybe Kathy too. I mean, I think this is the first um, non-metallic mining thing I've been involved with. Is there anything else you typically? I've, I've never been involved with it myself. I mean, it was these were done before we joined the committee, so. Um, it'd be all new, but I think it just needs your approval. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's all Wait, approval. Uh, that's, I just want to make sure we all ask all the questions. And, and this or have any, any questions that we possibly got? This is our first rodeo. I do have a question. Um, in our min minutes last month, it talked about a tree barrier being planted all the way around the mine. Um, I'm assuming that's in the works and is. Can't be in process until we can. Right, but I just meant, I mean, as far as. The yeah. plan you're, you're planning to do that. Yeah, it's rolled into the reclamation plan, so we have okay. to follow that or the permits don't get. Okay, and is that something the township required? Or yes, was, it was. Okay, I thought it was the township was requiring that. Yes, and I believe it was only on one side on the neighboring property and the trees get planted on top of, a, I believe it's a 10 foot high earth berm. berm. So we have to, when we strip the overbird, we can create the berm and then plant the trees on okay. And that's going to be on the south side, more or less. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. For one more area land on paper. We did. Okay. So he was a little concerned about the site, so we agreed to the berm and the okay. trees would help block the site, which is questionable whether he could see it or not. I would also say that that particular land was was here last month when the three of us were not informed okay. that it was even going on and that meeting was happening and we were supposed to attend. Okay. But none of us even knew that you guys were having the meeting and we were supposed to be here. <laughs> well, it's best if you can be here so we can you can answer Yes, questions. we just didn't know yeah. that the meeting was even taking place and we were supposed to attend yeah. because none of the three of us were given any information. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, just in the notes last month, it just says around the mine. So 
obviously I just want to make it clear in the minutes that it's just on that one specific site or property. It was but about about my memory, but okay. Okay. Blood. Yep. No worries. The rest of the land I own around. Okay. On the other three sides. Gotcha. Just so our notes can reflect that sure. in minutes. Did the note did the the reclamation plan or any documents specify that the height of the trees that are going to be planted? Um, I believe it did say in the um, basically we had to provide that plan of the firm, which you guys approved. Right. We submitted it to the county, so that is with the reclamation plan. And did we get any idea of the size of the trees you're going to I plant? think they were three to four feet high. That's my recollection. They're established trees. So the, the township approved it. And it sounded like the visual question came up. So you're going to do the trees. I'm not familiar with the operation. You guys blast. Yes. Yep. And and were, were neighbors all apprised of that? And and that's that's been yeah. We, so they know that's happening. Yep. We had a actual site visit when we did the township meeting. Everybody drove to the site. We all all the neighbors met there. Um, we showed where the mine was going. You know that we would blast, and um, so I guess everybody knows that we actually met on site. So that was one of the questions that was asked and noted in the minutes that there will be blasts. People were aware of that one to two times a year. Correct. That's it. Yep. And then the, my question is: Is what time of day would those be? And also, like trucks going in and out. What are, would the time frame of those be? So that's all in the county's comprehensive plan, which we follow for mining. So I believe that's Monday through Friday. Friday, I'd have to look what their what their county ordinance is. Yeah, if you you say comp comprehensive plan, but you mean the ordinance, the, the mine, not a mining ordinance. Yeah, that that, yeah. that there. Yep. So I just know we had an issue with that with another as far as timing, time of day. That came up in. So yeah. that's just my master. Yeah. I, mean, I think I would suggest all the rest of the committee, including myself, re read our non metallic mining ordinance. <laughs> but but for now, it sounds like they've done all the steps we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So so I guess uh, um, ask for a motion to approve as as presented. Kathy, did you have something? Well, Derek had Mr. Chair, if I may, just a few clarifications. Supervisor Fleming, you requested what exactly about the trees being included in the minutes? Um, well, last month, yeah, I just wanted it made. Last month it said around the mine, which means to me it means all the way around, potentially, and it sounds like it's just going to be one side. I just would like it in the minutes that it's clear. What so do we know? Outside. Outside. Yeah. No. Very good point. So that it's so that. Then it's not a problem later. If they only do it on the one no, side, no, then everything's good. Very good point. And, and what are we mining? I'm new to this. So. It's uh, basically limestone, road gravel, uh, rocks. Rock? Yep, rocks. <laughs> <laughs> for, for like ripper up and stuff yep. that we use it for. Yeah. Oh. And I got rocks. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, if, if we have a motion in a second, then we can still do more discussion. Okay, that, that doesn't close it. I mean, that's when we typically supposed to ask questions and discuss it as a committee. So I, I asked for a motion and I don't have any motion. I'll make a motion to approve the mining permit. All right. Everybody I'll second. All right. Second. So now we can discuss if there's more questions that occurred to you or, or, uh, more questions for them. Um, I actually I do have one. Uh, what's the typical life for a quarry like this? How long do you guys expect to be running it? Um, I mean, it's basically on whatever the needs are. Obviously, if there's a huge flood, we would go through more aggregate than not. But I would guess that mine is going to be there for you know 20, 30, 40 years. Okay. Well, 20 for sure. Yep. We have a 20 year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, basically the reclamation plan, it reads in there that um, until the mine is exhausted or it's no longer needed, and then there's a plan and a bond that's in place that would require that mine to be reclaimed. So we've set money aside 
so that when that happens, it all they can get reclaimed. Okay. And all your equipment is diesel generated. You don't run electricity in there or do any help. Okay. And what does that mean to be reclaimed at the end of this? What does that look like? Um, it explains exactly what would happen to that mine in the reclamation plan, which they approved. But essentially, it's we take down the high walls um, to a, like a three to one slope. If you can. We put overburden over the rock, and then I think four or five inches of topsoil, and then seed it so that the water leaves the mine and doesn't sit in there. So basically, it would be turned into like a grazing area. Pasture. That was my end goal was to have back to pasture for cattle, if that be the case. There, there are some that the high wall is just no way to get it back to three to yeah. one. So in those cases, in the in the ordinance, it says they have to put a permanent fence around it so that people don't come from the other side and go, whoop, you know, um, <laughs> basically, because around here, you know, other parts of the state, they can do other things with them. But with these high rock walls, sometimes it's difficult. So if they can get it back to three to one, that's what we want. But if they can't, then it's get back as much as they can and then permit fence around it or about around the high wall. Again, this may say in our ordinance, but is there some kind of bond you have to put before doing the reclamation or? Yeah, that's so the county approves that plan and the dollar amount that goes yeah. on the bond. So essentially when you guys would approve it before our permit would be finalized, we would put that bond up okay. for reclamation. So, so they can't like, we did, there was one released a couple of years ago, you know, the, the mine was done, they completed the reclamation plan, and then with the county satisfied with it, then that they did what they were supposed to do, and then they released the bond back to the person. Okay. That's the bond is there just in case Mr. Winchell would say, bye, yeah. and we're not stuck, the county's not stuck reclaiming it. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of old stories that got left, I think, in 2001 is when they changed that you had to be bonded yeah. and reclaim the pit. So a lot of the old ones that are left were before that and someone just walked away from them. Are you guys ready to vote now? Any more questions? Okay, uh, all in favor of approving the, the ordinance, I mean the... Uh, permit? Permit. Petition for non-metallic mining permit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Looks like we've approved it. So we can move on to the give heart result. Yep. Yeah. 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 So that's one. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. This one is a uh, rezone, uh, fairly straightforward. A um, little background. Um, the townships adopted the county's comprehensive uh, ordinance at different times. Some are, you know, 82, some are 84, some, you know, whatever year. Uh, so this particular parcel was split in, sometime in the 70s. So, which is why it's a legal non-conforming a forest parcel. Um, with the proposed change in use to uh, build a potentially build a single family home on it. Uh, we wanted to bring this into a conforming use, which would be um, a residential anything over 35 acres fits in that uh, a forest land category. 35 to 5 is your egg residential um, category. Uh, and our residential zones are, are uh, from 2 to 5. So that's, that's a little background on it. Uh, like I said, this particular one, um, if you have anything to say about it, Thomas, you can go for it. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Okay. It's should be pretty straightforward. Yeah. I purchased the land. The owner, town chairman at the time, Harry Pedley, the zoning administrator, all said it was buildable. And recently, I had an individual who was interested and went to talk to Ben, I think, and found out there were more conditions. It was never properly rezoned. 
And since I wasn't building on it or doing anything other than hanging out on it, there was no need to change the zoning. But in this case, he wants to potentially build up. He's not sure yet, but I think very strong about it. Which is to do that. Yeah, which is why we want to bring it into conformity. Um, we send out lists to all the neighboring landowners' letters, letting everybody know. You know what's going on here. What what we're looking at. Um, I included that in the pack. Uh, the only people I heard from was uh, Tom and Sally McMahon. Uh, basically, wanted to know what was going on. You know um, why they're rezoning it. What's the goals there? Uh, are they going to have a house on top of them? Are they? What are they? You know what's what's the the gist of it here? So and. In the end, you know, after explaining everything to them, they had no opposition to it. So that was the only landowner that adjacent landowner that I heard from. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So. I have a question. I guess I can do it after we. Um, so you're requesting to do the 20.6 and just rezone it mm -hmm. once yes. it properly should be. And then if if so, this person wants to build there, then you're going to want to section off part of that to sell to them. Is that or no, the whole parcel? The whole parcel. The whole parcel. The parcel the whole, you would sell the whole parcel. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. And the person interested in his daughter and son-in-law are adjacent neighbors. Oh. So it's also a family connection. They, gotcha. They want to. They just want to purchase the whole amount, so it may be rezoned properly. In there. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, could they get a motion to approve this permit? No. I'll make, okay. Sorry, go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the permit. And I'll second. second. Okay, so uh, I, I have a discussion point. Uh, I was wondering if our form could be modified. I've noticed more than once where if the owner's address is not the actual parcel, mm -hmm. it's really hard to find the address of the parcel itself. Sure. And, I was wondering if we could modify our form so that when that's the case, that's part of the record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know it sounds like a quibble, but no, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because then down just a little bit, it says present description of the property involved in this position. It's got the parcel number and all that, but it doesn't have the address. Sometimes they don't have address. Yeah. Addresses. I think if we could just edit this. This one, this particular one doesn't have an address mm -hmm. point with it. So oh, then well, if they build a house, is that yeah, yeah that's, yes, then yeah. they would have to go through they the, the, the driveway. driveway they would have to get the address yeah. point. Yeah. So yeah, that's why the the legal description and the the parcel number is the big one. Yeah, I think those should all be there too. But like I yeah. agree, there's a lot of times the the property owner lives out of the county or, you know, and so it just would be good. To, we we know the the exact property address if, if it's available. If it's available in this particular case, it wouldn't be, but most of the cases. Potentially, it would be so. Any more discussion? All in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that one's approved. Okay, so again, since we've reorganized, uh, we're also taking this time to reassess meeting times and dates for. Uh, I've got what, you know, what the current, this is the schedule that's set up in the room. Well, I just wanted to say that, yeah, go ahead. I'll pass these out. Well, thank you all. Thank, thank you, Beth. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, we can't I'll take my time just in case. Plus, you don't have enough. No, thank my, you. You're kind of my neighbor. Oh, yeah. So for the meeting dates, this is the zoning for these petitions have to meet 10 working days before county board. So that's why the meeting dates are already set. For their, this will be through December. So next year, it'll be the same. We'll adjust because like Labor Day always occurs the first Monday of the month. And because of December, County board doesn't meet this November, but they meet early in December. So, it, so it'll be always, there's always two meetings in August 
and two meetings in December or November. Um, and, it's, and it's just because by requirement, they have to meet 10 working days before the county board. Correct, Matt? Mm -hmm. So the only thing is like the meeting times. I know Adam has a conflict at for the three o'clock some. So, you know, I earlier said that I have five counties that I oversee. Um, <clears throat> the boss also meets at four o'clock on this time. Mm -hmm. And they're also tied with the land their, so that they're planning with, with, with their county PRD committee. So it's got the same essential uh, committees there. So I don't have a problem with the same day, but maybe if we could do ours in the morning, so that way if there is something on the agenda, that I could be able to fit both of the, the county committees. What does that do for you, man? It's quite on me. I'm, an, I'm an early morning guy. So. But I mean, I didn't know how you were juggling things with Vernon County. No, no, that's fine. Okay. Where, where do you live? Because I arrived late. What's that? Do you live in Richmond Center area then? Yeah, so I live in Boaz. Oh, Boaz. okay, but then. I was just questioning what your travel time is. Yeah, so I, I whatever, I can make that work. It's not a, it's one month. It's just, I just hate for you to get to, especially during budget time, sometimes that really becomes a constraint if the two committees are overlapping each other and they want to ask questions. And I know we have technology, but as we saw earlier, sometimes the technology doesn't always work by right. I agree with that. So, does a morning meeting cause problems for anyone? Works for me. Good. Wednesday morning, what time are you talking? Sorry? What time are we talking? <laughs> Here's the reason I go to Madison at four. Sorry, it's five thirty. So I mean, I can remote in if nobody has a problem with that. But I just need to know what time. But you're able to remote though. Oh, I can. Yes. Oh, okay. If it's okay with you. Yeah, we've been doing it. <laughs> Okay. So what, what, what time were you guys thinking? Nine. Nine. Uh, maybe not nine, but maybe nine thirty ten. Because these these meetings usually last hour, hour and a half at the most. Right. That still works for you if those meetings are that long? To be able to remote? I'll make it work. Okay. That's nine thirty seven. Thank you, guys. What time did you say? 9 30. 30. Mr. Chair, can we get a, a motion for that? Yes. Of course, yes, I mean, we do need this. So I, I guess I need a motion to uh, have our meetings at 9 30 in the morning. On the first Monday. First Monday, okay. yeah. First or with the dates on here. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's always going to be the first yep. Monday. Yeah. Except those two, two days for sure. Yeah. When, yeah. I'll make a motion to have our meetings at 9.30 on the first Monday of the month for the okay. Natural Resources Committee. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Did and, that. and then for like the November 4th meeting, we'll work out and have the dates for 2025. So we'll set them up ahead of time. That way, you know when the meetings are, with especially with the the weird ones. So. So we're done with calendar stuff. Uh, correspondence. Anything? And future agenda items. Um, one of the things that probably should be on the next agenda is. See, the Land Conservation Committee, now it's Land and Zoning, and now it's Natural Resources. We're members of the Wisconsin Land Plus Water Organization, and you maybe get maybe get emails from like um, Matt Kruger or Christine Schlut, or I think those are probably the two main ones. They'll let you know what's going on at the state level for conservation, bills that are coming up, things, new things that are happening. Um, but one of the things is too is we are members of the group and there's area groups um, like we belong to the southern area, Wisconsin land plus water. 
And so we've, we have um, this land conservation is the departments and the committee. And one of the things is we need to vote on who is the representative for this committee and who is the alternate as who if they if they can't attend the meetings or um, the southern they meet like three times a year the area southern area meeting Melissa Luck was the representative before and you were the backup but that's Melissa but Melissa's not on it so we don't have anybody so it's something to think about we'll need to decide that by when. Next month is fine. Next month, okay. Should but I ask that you send us a link that, that explain or or to that organization so we we can kind of do a little homework on that. Yeah, I can I can put it in the folder. Yeah, that's all. And and so this I know maybe the others have received the email from the Google group for this. Is that what we're talking about a southern area? Yep. Um. Is it? Yeah, okay. But I, I don't what know. Is, what is that? Do you know that what that Google group is about? I, I think the Google group or the. Oh, well, yeah, I'm just they got a couple, a couple emails. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kelly, okay. Kelly oh, Myers. Yep. That's the group. It's um, Wisconsin Land Plus Water. That's the state organization. Did you just get that today? Yeah. Oh, I don't see that. Two thirteen. I. Yeah. Um, they might have sent it to the new members. But we need to join this. I mean, personally, I don't use Google. Yeah. No. No. I. I. I that's a. Um. But I. I can send you the link to the Wisconsin Land Plus Water, and I'll tell you. A little bit about the organization and okay. they've been around for as long as there's been used to be soil water conservation districts. So right. they've been around for probably 70 plus years. Just change names as land conservation has changed names. Okay. They, they got a web page too. Yeah, that's what I was gonna send the link to. Okay. Yeah, okay. and then kind of I'll put that in a, a good uh, you want me just review. email it to you guys all or send the link or put it in the I think that would be good. Okay. Great. Yes. And it's yeah, awesome. link to everyone. Yep. Yeah. The, uh, just the website. Yeah. yeah. I sent everybody a note. I think last week. We just a couple of things to look at. There's, there's an overwhelming stuff out there. Yeah. We don't want to try to do it all at once, but we'll just keep. But uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that it will be on the next agenda. Sorry. Voting on who's the member, who's the member, and who's the alternate for the. Right. Right. And then Any other two will questions? we also have the short term rental on there? That uh, possibly we'll see what, what Mike's at with it. Okay. You know, Corporation Council yep. what's in their hands right now. So we'll see what they come back with. I wonder if that ordinance should be put into the new link, the new, the new, the, the went from land, land and zoning folder to oh, natural yes. resources folder. So Same. that should be dropped into that. Yep. And then one other thing I just wanted to note is. A lot of times in the past, we've had our zoning up at the top, like right under the public comments, so that like all those people didn't have to sit there and wait through all of those reports, which I know they were more lengthy today because then we have new people. Um, so there was a lot of stuff that you added about, well, and of course, extension was added this time too, so that was more lengthy. Um, but is it possible to maybe have the zoning petitions right under the public comments? Because then people could leave if they wanted and didn't have to. I think that's the way we've done it in the past. Yeah. This was just so different, Ms. I think. Mr. Chair, if I may, the, the agenda format for the standing committees and the county board was the standard format that you all approved in your new set of board okay. rules. So when I made these new agendas, I simply followed that from the board rules as those were effective April 16th. You as the committee chair sort of changed the order, but um, they were set up to mirror what you all approved in your new set of county board rules. So if you want to change that, you can let me know at the next meeting. But by default, that's how all committee board or standing committee agendas and county board will be set up for board rules unless I hear different from the chair. Well, I would say if we could just leave it that way. And if we see we have a lot of people in attendance, we can always vote to move it, move them up. We've done that before. You can do that, correct? Yeah. Well, I'm fine with flipping it. I, as sometimes happens, we don't fully understand all the ramifications of what we do. So, <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> well, maybe this, this sounds to me like it 
this might be one instance. Earlier in the video. And, uh, so we need to just tell you there. We have to you as the committee chair can amend the order of the agenda if, if you have to in those um, in that post situation. And he would do that each time, or we would. Or if you do it before, I mean, you can you approve the agenda. That's why I work with you, so we can look okay. at that for the next time. Okay, and you can approve the agenda either then or on the meeting. Yep. So we could always do that depending on if there were a lot of people in attendance. We can just decide to change it for that specific day and move up, move it up. We do that frequently where we move items on the agenda. And otherwise, we could just leave it if you know there weren't many people uh, waiting. But, but it's a good point. Yeah. Because they just they sat through a long time, wouldn't necessarily have to. Any more agenda items? Anything else? Okay. How about uh, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I have a second. I'll second it. All right. We have a motion to second. Uh, all in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you much.